to Jai Long and this is Make Your Break. Whether you're a big-hearted creative or an aspiring entrepreneur, let's take action on your dreams. Reconnecting you with your why and giving you the how. I'm here to dish out actionable mindset tips and fun industry secrets to help you blow up your biz. From eye-opening reality checks to motivational gold, no two episodes are ever the same. So tune in weekly, skip the FOMO, and let's dive into the deep together. Hey, hey, Jai here. Hey, did you get a chance to be at the workshop this week? If you did, I hope it was a lot of fun because it was a lot of fun for me. Hey, right now I'm talking to Rebecca Bianca and she is a wedding photographer. She has a candle business and a face painting business all in South Australia. And she's a creative entrepreneur, does many things. And she joined the Six Figure Business Map, which is my flagship course around November last year. And since then she's hit six figures in her business and she's been growing and scaling. And I knew that I wanted to bring her onto the show to share with you because it's so inspiring to hear how somebody else has done it especially when you're on the journey and sometimes it feels impossible to be able to scale a creative business, you know, into the six figures or make a good income from doing what you love. How mind blowing is that when you can actually do the, something like that? Now, before we get started, I just want to share a couple of little things that's happened this week. So um, depending on when you're listening to this, if you're listening to this live right now or for the next couple of days, um, my, my course, the six figure business map is open for enrollment. It's been a lot of fun. We've been, um, Oh, it, it, there's been so many things going on because we just did a rebrand. We just made some new websites and you always know this, you know, there's always problems when you create something new and you're trying to grow and scale. And, um, we released a documentary, which was really fun at the workshop. We had Donald Miller, New York times bestselling author, Donald Miller from story brand. He joined us on the workshop. We had Cara Mia join us on the workshop and it was just, yeah, so much fun. We had thousands of people register for it and, To be honest, I got so exhausted, especially afterwards, you know, it takes so much energy to stand up and present and have everything, have everything ready to go and chat box goes live and everything goes live. And then you got to present and talk to everybody and and host and do everything else. And if you know me, I'm a bit of an introvert, so I do find it hard sometimes, but I get through and it was so much fun and we impacted so many people and lots of new sailors joined the course, which is so cool. I've been in there you know, probably every waking moment actually in the Facebook group and in circle, just introducing everybody to everybody. And I did a big mastermind of everybody yesterday, which was cool. So yeah, lots of things have been happening and I'm really excited. I think right now I'm just really excited about the growth of the business and all the things we've been pulling together. And I just want to say thank you for, to you actually, for being here with us on this journey, because it has been a lot of fun. And if you've been listening from the start, you're probably probably noticed it's been such a whirlwind of a journey and we've been doing so many things and pushing those boundaries and making sure we're uncomfortable and scaling up and doing things that make us all scared and make us all better because you know this, nothing happens in that comfort zone. You need to get out of that comfort zone. No matter what level you're at, there's always a new level and there's always something else you can be doing and something else you can be pushing towards and and everything else. So let's get in and talk to Rebecca and uh, see how she actually scaled her her wedding photography business into the six figures and how she's actually been growing her face painting business as well. So I'm really excited about today and um, I'll see you real soon. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? I'm good. Thanks, Jai. And you? I'm really good. I'm excited to have you on the podcast today. We can talk a lot about, um, I know that you just hit six figures recently in your business and uh, you're inside the business map at the moment. You're hitting some massive milestones, some massive wins. So I really wanted to get you on the show so you can share with the world your journey from where you've come from to where you are today. And then also if you've got any practical tips for those that are in the trenches right now that maybe believe that it's impossible to hit six figures as a creative entrepreneur and um or maybe that they're feeling overwhelmed or burnt out or whatever it is but um yeah if you'd like to start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about who you are and where you are yep sounds good i'm just as excited to be on the podcast by the way um so thank you so much for having me um this is (laughs) awesome so my name is rebecca and i'm from the barossa valley in south australia i'm a wedding photographer bit of a creative entrepreneur as i found out and have finally put a label to it um thought i was just some crazy woman trying to do all these things but um that's that's what i am so i do children's face painting and um i do like a school holiday activity called horse fun day and so i've got all these different 
creative outlets, but primarily I'm a wedding photographer and um, that has really been taking off um, in the last 12 months more than ever before. And so, yeah, I'm really excited to share how I've done that. And so hopefully I can inspire some other people to get to where I am because it was a roller coaster. It was fun. And all of a sudden it just happened and it was, it was amazing. So I'm I really happy to share. <laughs> It's pretty amazing, hey, because I think there's so many people right now that wouldn't share your same beliefs of like, it's the best time ever to sort of start your business and and grow. Um, I think there's so many people struggling right now. So it's incredible that you're in that mindset and you're finding all that work right now when there is so much turbulence and the last couple of years have been hard for a lot of businesses, but you've had the most success than you've ever Mm, had. Yes, it's been crazy. Like, yeah, it's been the best ever. (laughs) Yeah. How long have you been in the business map now? Um, so I signed up in November, just like when the wedding photography summit was on. Yeah. Wow. So not, not very long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And yeah. I know that you, um, sent me a message and you wanted to share like your wins, but you're a little bit sort of drawn back. You don't really yeah. want to share because it's like pretty hard. Can you talk me through that process? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I actually didn't realize that I had hit six figures. I knew that at some point I'd have to register for GST, which is the Australian tax, soon or later. And I just wanted to have a little bit of a look. So I opened up the books and had a bit of a look and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, <laughs> is, this, is this right? And I'm looking through everything and then I opened up Studio Ninja and I'm like, yeah, everything's matching. I'm like, this is this is real. Like it was it was over $100,000 in profit on my profit and loss statement. And that's all obviously included. All, all of my expenses to date. So I was super excited and I thought, oh my God, like, who do I tell? Like, oh, I don't want to tell anyone. Like, I'm, well, everyone, I'll either be jealous or they won't care or I'll be bragging. Like, I'm not going to do that to people. No, it's all good. Just keep working. Um, so, But I messaged you because I knew you would be proud. <laughs> so, so that was my outlet. <laughs> and then you immediately said I should share it with the Facebook group. And I was like, what the heck? Why? No, no, I'm not doing that. And so I kind of just ignored that, kept moving on. And, and it's been in the back of my mind ever since you said that. And I finally built up the courage and thought you know that and changed it around like the reasons why I'm sharing is to inspire and what a perfect place to share my win than that Facebook group where people might be still in a place Mm. where I was in the past so and it's just so amazing that like I I was in a place where I thought I'll never hit six figures I can't do what I love while making that much money it's just not going to happen it was always like a, a divide like you can either do what you love and make a little bit of money, but not much, or you can just work and just do what you got to do to get by. And changing from that mindset has just been so freeing. Yeah. So I, I really felt amazing when I shared the post and got so much good feedback from everyone and, you know, all the well done and congratulations. And then when you said, you know, to come on the podcast, I was like, what? Like, did not expect that. So I was <laughs> running around the house, like all excited. Like, yeah, because I started listening to your podcast and I did think to myself, maybe one day I could be a success story like this. <laughs> and That's it wasn't so cool. even that long ago. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. And honestly, like um, obviously one of the reasons why I said you should share it, two reasons. One is because for you, it's really important. Like you do all this hard work and a lot of the times people are there for the lows and we share a lot of frustrations and stuff like that. But we often tend to sort of dim our light a little bit when we actually, you know, when all the work pays off and you've done all the work, you've invested in yourself and and you, like you said, you didn't even notice because you've just been out there, you know, doing your thing. But it's important for us to celebrate our wins because it gives us the endorphins to keep going and it creates new habits to like create, it's like a winning mentality because now you know it's possible. So then you're going to recreate it and recreate it. But also the second thing is like if sharing it with the community means you're going to inspire those that believe that it may be impossible or just one more person because you don't know who shares it where it lands to the right person that changes their trajectory in their business. Now, for example, it's easy for me to say like, yeah, I've made six figures before and it's easy, but maybe somebody else is in that group going like, I know it works for Jaya, but it probably won't work for me or like it's impossible for me or I'm a mom and, and it just doesn't seem possible or I'm a, I'm a dad and, I, and I'm busy or, or I work full, full time on another job or whatever it is, you know. But when you, more people come out and they share these things, it breaks those limiting beliefs for all of us, but it needs to be the right person for us to relate to, to go, ah, that person did it. I Surely I can do it. And the more that we see everyone opening up and talking about money, I know that you shared a screenshot as well, the more it gives permission for people to feel like less guilty of talking about those things, which in turn means the more empowered we are to make the right decisions. 
So it's really, it's such a massive knock-on effect. And I feel like we're doing so much good work with all of this and you're part of it. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think, like you said, that screenshot was really something that um, could show people how much I was struggling before because yeah. it shows like from 2017, I had $0 when I did earn something. It probably was well under $5,000, but um, I wasn't using the software Zero, the accounting software, so there was nothing recorded there. And then you can see it was only like, ten thousand dollars and and that sort of thing and and just saying those figures out loud it's like well you can't live off ten thousand dollars that's not a full-time job so totally. obviously I had another job um on the side always up until COVID hit and then when COVID hit I lost my part-time job that I had on the side and I wasn't eligible for that job keeper thing by about seven days or something like that and so that's when everything shifted for me and I thought well you know, what do I do? And that's when I went all in and just couldn't believe the results I was getting. It was just an amazing move. But yeah, looking looking at all those years before I actually went all in and before I decided to get help um, and seek advice and um, learn and grow, I was just kind of like plodding along, waiting for things to happen. And, you know, oh, I might get a booking, I might get an inquiry or, you know, things might happen or eventually I'll do this. And all those words like one day and all those things, mm. that's how I used to be. And then since wanting to change my mindset um, and hearing all about all these different things that you can do to, to help change all that, it's, um yeah, you can see the massive growth within 12 months. And that's literally, ha- that's since I've been starting to do all these things. The majority of what I learned was from your podcast. Like I was getting free information. Why why wouldn't I? Absolutely. Like I, I'm not a reader. I don't like reading. And I, like, I, I'll say it like, I can't read. I, I, I can, I can read things. I can read and write, but I, like reading a book or yeah, learning something like span. big text. Like, yeah, I just, mm. my brain will be thinking something else and my eyes will be scanning over the words. And before you know it, I've read a page. I'm like, wait, what did it say? So that's the type of, um, you know, upbringing I had. I just, I wasn't a reader. So, you know, silent reading in primary school, I'd have the biggest book I can find in front of me on the desk with ladybugs that I collected at lunchtime and draw little trails of where they walk on the paper hoping not to get caught by the teacher you know and so yeah now I've found audible and podcasts and it's just like it's it's education in a way that I can sort of draw from it and use it it's incredible yeah and you your podcast is just well I don't sorry. know if you've noticed this yet but um once you yeah. start getting on the train of self-development like mm. um you went from the podcast now you're in my business map and you join mm-hmm. a community but after a while, you start getting obsessed with change because oh, yeah. <laughs> you start seeing it work. You know, it's no longer yeah. just like it's no longer just like quotes on Instagram or something. You no. actually start like implementing these things, and then when you start seeing results, like there's something that changes in you, and then you're like, "Oh my god!" Like I, I can yeah. change the way that I think and my own mindset, my own situation. I can take responsibility for these things, and then things become possible that maybe used to be impossible for us. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's amazing. I love this self-help journey I'm on. Like I I just, I'm catching myself all the time, like more and more, everything I do, like from waking up in the morning, like I'm a sleeper in a row, I'm a snooze button hitter. I'm a, you know, (laughs) and I'm just like, but I don't want to do that anymore. So the moment I open my eyes and the alarm goes off, I'm now going like, what do I want to achieve today? What are those Mm. 90 day goals? What are my visions? What are my dreams? Like get out of bed and make them happen. And it's helping me sort of just, yeah, I'm catching myself all the time, changing those sort of limiting beliefs that it's like your, I read that book you recommended, what was it? Millionaire success habits. And they talk about like your inner, demon and then like how they're they're the ones in your head going like oh but you know have the backup plan or Mm. or you know you could just go and do this for a little while and and it's just like catching yourself with those train of thoughts to even just for things like you know you're on the computer and you know you've got to get some work done and then you think yeah but what's happening over here or over there or my phone went off and you know just just leave it do what you're doing because you need to get this done because it's going to contribute to your goals like just yeah that mindset shift of catching yourself is so important it's incredible huh and even just the way that you talk Mm. to yourself and things like that like for example i'm sure it would have been like a big investment for you to join the business map and mm. like do something like that. But then after a while, and the way that I see it now, because it was the same for me when I joined my first course, you know, it was a few thousand dollars and I was like, man, this is too expensive. But after a while, <laughs> I changed the way I talked to myself because what I used to think was I believed that it wasn't for me or I wasn't good enough or I wouldn't be able to get results like everyone else or I I just wasn't worthy of it. 
And now like I consume courses, like n- there is no tomorrow. Like last night I was watching like a three hour course on um, how to build a community um, to help in yeah. the business map. And it's so funny because I'm like, I see the price. I'm like, it doesn't matter because I, I need to get to that next thing. And, and I know I'm capable of making and implementing those teachings to make it all work. And yeah, um, yeah you catch the way that you even just speak to yourself. And another yeah. thing you said, like you even um, like waking up in the morning and one thing that people always say is like, Jai, how do you have the energy just to bounce out of bed before sunrise? But I think like, it's not like I love jumping out of bed. The bed is is the best place ever. Cozy, but it's warm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But when you get in the flow of what you're meant to be doing and when you get in line with like how you want to move and, and things that you want to get done, it seems almost effortless to jump out of bed, yeah. to go and do those things, to hit those goals, to sit there and and like not watch Netflix or not do those things because mm. all of a sudden there's no resistance. Like you, you're literally yeah. in the flow of like going towards your goals. Is that how you feel? Yeah, definitely how I feel. Like I just, I'm, I'm literally just so excited about everything. Like I, I, you know, everything that's happening, there's so much going on all the time. And I'm just like, I'm just so excited about that. And I'm so excited about this and I'm excited about that. And so I just start, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm always preparing for the next thing. And like you said, with your goals, like that winning um, sort of feeling, it pushes mm. you. Like when I first So I'll be honest here with your podcast, like you gave me so much from that and I implemented everything you said and everything I thought, second thoughts about, I'd go, well, what would Jai do? He would do it. So just, just get on with it. Just go for it. Like a lot of time I'd message you and ask a question, but I'd backspace it because I just figured out the answer while I'm asking and Mm. things like that. So, but I just felt like I got so much value from those podcasts that I owed you something. So I was like, what's this business map about? I know I can get more from this and I know I can go all in. Like, what are all the extra secrets? I want to know everything else. Um, but I, when I made the final decision, I was like, well, it doesn't matter because I've, I've got so much value already. Like it's worth what I'm spending before I totally. even get all that from the business map. Like, so yeah, it was just, yeah, that spending thing. It's just, um, you know, I forgot where I was going with that, but yeah, I just wanted to say that, that, yeah, the value that you provide is just incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. And the way that we see the value is different as well because someone else might join something and then they're not willing to put in the work and they're like, oh, there's no value in it. But for an example, like I joined this course two days ago and it goes for a year. It's on how to build a community and um, they're over-delivering to the max. There's like coaching calls and all this stuff. And it was 1500 USD. So I bought it, like no problem at all. And then as soon as I bought it, I learned one thing and I was like, oh my God, I, like, I don't need to sign back into this course because that one thing is the only thing I need, like for 1500 yeah. bucks, like yeah. I, I was like, this is a little game changer. It's going to save me time. I know it's going to save me $1,500 worth of time this year. And mm. it's going to help me strengthen my client experience. And then I was thinking like how the course now is literally just over delivering because I've already got the value. Like it's yeah, already yeah. done. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, I well and truly booked more than one wedding to cover the costs like a long time ago before I even paid for the course. It was just like, well, it was just a no brainer really. It like, definitely. I totally get it. Like I've got so much out of your podcasts and then now the business map too, is just giving me so much more and the wedding photography summit. Like there's just so much it's that awesome. you'd be silly not, not to take the opportunity to grow and take um, the advice from other people who are superior to you in the field that you aspire to, to grow in. I feel like I've just, um, yeah, wasted a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like I heard a saying the other day saying you're going to pay for education. A lot of people think that's expensive, but if you don't, you're going to pay for the mistakes and either way you're going to oh, pay, yeah. but one is more expensive yeah. and takes longer than the other. And I think about that so much and I'm like, man, mm. it's so true. I'm always paying to miss those mistakes. <laughs> yes, definitely. hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. Hey, so with your journey, I want to give some practical stuff away for someone that's just like yourself, maybe 12 months ago. Yeah. That's right now just going like, okay, so maybe I, maybe I just like lost my job during COVID. Maybe I am kind of thinking I want to go all in on this, but I'm not too sure if I should back myself. Yeah. I want to just sort of talk through a few things that have changed the game for you. And uh, even if it's mindset shifts, like it doesn't, anything's open and everything's on the table right now. But um, yeah, just things that we can think about and start implementing ourselves. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many things like I've, like a lot of the things that I was doing was mind shift 
and that helped with me taking action on the things that I wanted to but um, always had sort of just like, oh, I'm going to do that one day. So the mindset shift really helped, you know, focusing on that positive point to your goal, like, you know, um, getting an extra lead a day, that sort of thing, just having in the back of your head, what can I do today to make money? Like, mm. and, and that helps clarify what you shouldn't be doing um, during the day and what maybe needs to be outsourced. So outsourcing was so freeing for me. I um, outsourced editing and that was a really scary step. It was it was tricky, I'm not going to lie, to find the right people and to do the toing and froing to get things right, but it's so totally. worth it in the end. Um, and then other things like implementing systems like Studio Ninja, your CRM system is so important. It just helps things be automated. So there's, um, you know, you're not going to miss steps along the way with your workflow. And then, you know, organisational things like Asana, I, I'm using Asana. So getting systems in place, starting to outsource things, these are all practical things. But um, also letting go of um, the fear of spending because, once you start giving more without expecting anything back, you're just like, oh, how'd that happen? <laughs> like, you know, I've just all of a sudden got this booking or, you know, and, and visualizing things. The mindset thing is so important. Like actually see yourself doing what you want to be doing. Actually imagine yourself having what you want to have mm. and it will help you drive you to get there. Can we even stop on that for a second? Mm-hmm. Well, it's really interesting and it's hard to tell. Like this will land on someone at the right time, which would be perfect. And then other people will be like, oh, that doesn't work. But yeah. I honestly <laughs> got to say, dark. yeah, like for myself, if there's been a point in my career or any of my careers where I couldn't visualize myself with the success that I wanted or with my next step or whatever it was, then I wouldn't have clarity. And then I wouldn't take action the way that I do because I I felt like I was foggy headed and I just didn't know. Right. And it could be down to so many things, but for instance, like if, if I want to be like super successful as a wedding photographer, like I would imagine, you know, shooting in a certain location on the other side of the world or, or like actually like what it would be like to book that much, you know, like charge someone that much and what would it be like for me to shoot and where would I stay and how would I dress? And like, and I imagine yeah. the whole yeah, thing, the whole process. Mm. And then when I can imagine it, like before it even exists, it becomes so easy for me to go after that goal because I know exactly what I want. I've got so much yeah. clarity around it and I get there so fast. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree, definitely. Like mm. it, it makes so much sense to me now, but, you know, like you said, listening to things like this maybe only 12 months ago, I was like, mm, really? And I'm like, well, if I want it, I'm going to give it a go and it works. So like you said, you kind of get addicted to it, the reality of the fact that it works. Like you're positive. <laughs> like I've always been a positive, bubbly, happy person, but the mindset of yeah, imagining, literally visualizing mm. everything. And and like you said, every step of the way. So if I was going to shoot at this location, where would I need to be at? What are the things I would need? Well, how would I prepare for that? What would I, who do I need to talk to? Like, just go and do those things. Don't just be like, one day I want to shoot here. One day Love maybe that. someone will book me and they'll be getting married there. No, go there, go take your camera, go there, just start taking photos. Even if there is no bride and groom there, you might bump into someone, talk to someone, hey, how are you going? Like, I'm waiting for talk, just get out there and just be yourself be you and talk to people like make it happen don't just wait for it to happen like visualize it think about it and then go and do it go and get it and it and then it will come well one cool thing is a lot of people will don't put this connection together but when you get a coach the reason why that changes the game is because and for myself I will visualize my success and my next level and how to get there. But my coach always visualizes past what I believe is even possible. And when they visualize it, it what happens is because everything I, I um, visualize, I create and it happens, like it actually happens. Mm. But the problem is I'm always like, I should have visualized something way bigger. Yeah, and I, I know, just I can't see that, right? So my coach will yeah. always <laughs> say like, Jai, I see what you're trying to do here, but you're thinking so small. You need to go more unrealistic. Mm. Imagine if you expanded like this and imagine this. And then all of a sudden I have new belief systems and then I start acting differently towards those that's pushing my boundaries and my comfort zone. And then I'm able to do something so much bigger. So the reason why I would say something like when you join the course, like please share that screenshot, please show people mm -hmm. because someone joins that and they're imagining themselves, you know, making 50,000 a year and like maybe 
are increasing their prices by $500 or something, but then they see your thing, all of a sudden they got a new belief system that they didn't yeah. even know was possible. And then mm. they start thinking differently and acting differently. And then when I get in there yeah. and say like, you've got to think unrealistic, look, Rebecca has mm. done it. That's why you would like go for a coach or, or something like that, because all of a sudden you expand everything. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Definitely. Like I first was like, oh, six figure business map. That means like if I sign up and if I do everything in here, I'm going to be making six figures. Like that's the reality. If I just do everything they say, that's, that's what's going to happen. So why wouldn't I do it? And now it's, I think it's, what is it? It's less than six months and I'm way past that. I'm at 150 (laughs) now. Um, well, I've got new goals. Like I've already said it out loud to my family. I want to be a millionaire one day. I do. And I'm I'm already sort of catching myself there going one day I just said one day it doesn't matter like let's let's mm. become a millionaire today like I totally. you know, get excited about it like I'm I want to be a millionaire so I'm listening to books like millionaire success habits and mm-hmm. singing that I want to be a billionaire song out loud you know and I'm imagining yeah. what am I going to do with the money and where is it going to go and how's it going to help the people around me and and what's it going to allow me to do um in all the positive ways that I want it to to be you know so it's yeah you just step up and then you reach that goal and you step up again and you reach that goal you step up and you just keep keep going it's yeah it's exciting it's so insane and it's so insane like saying it out loud is is awesome as well and I've got to say like when I decided to become a millionaire which was in 2020 COVID Mm -hmm. happened Everything yeah. else bad happened. And it was, I was like, okay, I'm not going to deviate from my plan. I'm still going to go for it. And then by that year, I did do it. I had no idea how from the start. Mm. I was just like, you just going like, all right, yeah, so I'm just going to listen to some yeah, books and stuff. <laughs> but I visualized it so hard that I've completely believed that was possible. And I yeah. believed it was true before it even happened. And yeah. then it was the 31st of December that year that it actually happened. And I was like, oh my yeah, God, wow. I can't believe this, right? So cool. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I just like, I want to like share that with you because it is insanely possible. You don't need to yeah. know how it's going to happen. You just need to know what the end goal is. And then from there, you will start acting differently, thinking yeah. differently, making different decisions, different moves, and you'll make it happen. Yeah, thanks. No, I, I believe that. And, you know, big credit to you in the way you've been putting out everything, like sharing all of the success of your own to help encourage us to have our own successes. Like it's, I, I believe it 100%. Like it's, it's so fun. It's so, so, so exciting. Like to come from nothing. Like I'm not a person that has been handed anything. And I've heard your story from start to finish. And I've heard it a, a few different times on different kind of, um, you know, different podcasts or whatever it is. And uh, that is so inspiring that you come from humble beginnings because, mm. you know, so did I. Like no one gave me a check to say, hey, do you do want to start a business? Do you, or, you know, do you, do you want all of this stuff so you can do, you know, it's like I built it from scratch. So anybody can do this, like anyone. You, you don't need to like just, yeah, forget the excuses, forget the reasons. Like we've all had hardship and, I, you know, not dismissing anyone's hardship being m- maybe worse than, than others, but it, it's you've got to use them to accelerate to and in a fire. positive way. Like, yeah, there's always, like I've said this from a young age, even from my early teens, like there's always a positive in every negative situation. And if you can find that positive, sooner rather than later it will help you grow and it will help you move on from that and use that negative situation in a positive way to move forward and if you can do that every time something it gets hard you will find a way out every time can i ask you like um with, with that mindset and everything like right now i know there's like obviously many of us including myself are just like struggling with work for some there's something in work where it's like oh man, I don't know if I want to continue on. Like this is becoming overwhelmingly hard or something, but when you kind of hit roadblocks, when things become hard for you, what do you do to sort of keep yourself motivated to be able to keep going through that resistance? I definitely um, look at the end goal. Not that there seems to be an end goal because it keeps getting bigger and bigger, but I look at the the immediate one in front of me right now and, and what I want. And that, that helps me drive to it. But I also do things like um, if I am sort of, you know, and I'm not going to lie, I do get to the point where I think, oh my gosh, everything's too much. Everything's happening at once. Like, <laughs> oh, I wish I had my PA like with me right now. She's, you know, I've booked in to employ someone for the first time in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited about it. But instead of going, ah, freaking out, just, just stop, take a minute. Like um, I do 
do meditation, I do yoga, um, I listen to, you know, I ride my horse as well and sometimes, you know, that has been frustrating in the past because I've been thrown off and all sorts of things. Um, but now I get up in the morning and I start the day with riding my horse and I actually I'll listen to a podcast or a book first while I'm doing all the chores and then I'll ride my horse with meditation music going in my AirPods awesome. so that it's just it's keeping me calm while I'm doing something that could get frustrating and it just helps you know keep me keep me calm and relaxed so if I'm on the computer even and I'm finding like ah, there's emails everywhere I've got to update my website I've got to do this like hey I've got like three inquiries today this is awesome I'm so excited but how do I get back to them all like you know everything's going on then yeah just play some relaxing music and just take it back a step have a cup of tea like you need to have you time you need to look after yourself yeah that's what I was really, hearing it's really like important really working on yourself and and then that helps you realign with your goals and feel more centered. Yeah. Oh, I just bought myself a motorbike and got my motorbike license. It was the best feeling ever. I've been zooming Yay. around with my husband. So exciting. Um, we actually bought a um, a Harley to celebrate when I hit the six figures. We thought wow. let's do something cool and crazy. So we um, bought a Harley Davidson from Sydney. So we flew from Adelaide to Sydney, bought the Harley wow. and rode it back home, which was an awesome adventure. And I was listening to your podcast all the way home. <laughs> so it was so good. <laughs> and... <laughs> And then, um, yeah, we decided, why don't I get my own bike and get my license? And so doing those things, like when when you hit goals, like mm. don't be scared to celebrate them and reward yourself, even if it's not throwing a party and bragging to everyone, just within yourself, do something for yourself, get yourself something that you've always wanted because you deserve it. You don't have to keep putting it back into the business or your mortgage or the boring stuff, you know, like um, reward yourself and look after yourself. Like, I think that, I think that's so important, isn't it? Like we, and like I was saying before, it's like, we put so much emphasis on all the struggles and the hard things, but many of us, we forget to like reward ourselves when we hit a big milestone or, you know, just Mm. something like this. And like one example is my wife, she really wants to buy an investment property and she wants to do it all by herself with no help from me and from her business and everything. And yeah, it's, it's like a really cool goal and stuff, but she's actually, she's like, I also don't like to invest because it's boring for me. So she's like setting up a goal where like once she buys an investment property, then she's going to reward herself with like a gift of something that she like actually really, really wants. Yeah. Which cool. is kind of cool because it's, um you kind of gamify the whole situation and then it yeah. like gets you excited about going for that yes. goal because there's something else on the other side as well. Exactly. Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm, I was like, yeah, I'm going to make six figures. And then it's like, oh, I got a motorbike to say like, well done for that. It's kind of <laughs> like, you got to reward yourself for, hitting the goals that you set out especially if you go past them like you know yeah i'm terrible for it i barely ever sort of stop to celebrate because i'm always on to the next thing but yeah i know i need to listen to your advice basically no i've listened to your advice and i did it i was like i'm not gonna be like (laughs) that i'm gonna celebrate like i'm gonna do i'm gonna do it and i'm really glad i did like um yeah, it, it's definitely been awesome because usually what I'll do is similar to you. You're like, okay, well, now I've got all this extra money. I can now do this next project. I can now mm. um, make this thing even bigger. I can now, you know, you can <laughs> keep going down all those creative avenues. Like I have implemented every all of your advice in only one of my businesses. I can't mm. wait to see what automation and assistance and outsourcing does to my face painting business Mm. and then again to my horse fun day business and I know we have to um, be careful with how much we do but once you've got something going really awesome and you've automated it to the point where you it's it's almost running itself but you do the bits you need to do everyone else does the bits they need to do then you can move on to other projects and have your other creative outlets on the go like it's like you've got your clothing label and all these other things you used to have the dj business and all these sorts of different things so it's yeah there's nothing saying you can't do all the things you love you definitely Mm. can um you just have to manage it well and yeah and get a grasp of how how to do it and that's what the business map and coaching and all that sort of thing helps you clarify all those things like how to automate things and 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 get things sort of running nice and smooth so that you're only doing the bits you love and everyone else is doing all the bits you're like oh, I hate this all the bits they uh, love <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> Yeah, right. it's um, it's really liberating and it's really exciting. And I know a lot of people look at me and go like, Joe, how do you have so many projects and businesses going at the same time? But I, like you got to understand is like when, when you are good at business, you can build a business and you build it up to the point where it's automated. It works well. Everyone's got their place and then you can move on onto the next project or whatever it is. And it's, um, and it's, it's literally 
it's rinse and repeat. Like it's, you know, starting a wedding photography business was no different from starting a cafe, which was no different from starting an education business, which was no different from a clothing business, which was no different to DJ business, which is no different to my property development yeah. business, like yeah. no different to my electrical business. <laughs> Literally all of them are exactly the same. And yeah. so a lot of people don't know that. So when they come to my course, they're like, oh, but is it for me? I'm a family photographer. I'm like, it's funny because like a lot of the times we think it's got to be for the niche, but really like business is business. The same as like photography is photography. It doesn't matter what niche you use and like photography is photography, you know? So yeah, it can be implemented and um, taken across platforms and absolutely used for the rest of your life to create businesses. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's awesome. It's so exciting. <laughs> hey, is there any last thing you want to share with us and share with the listeners with um, any words of wisdom and advice for uh, going after our six figure dreams of living the dream and knowing and making it possible for ourselves? I suppose get clarity on what it is you want and why like really hone in on your why because the the deeper you can get into your why, like why you want the success or why you want to achieve those goals, why you want that amount of money, the easier it is to go after it because um, you really understand um, the clarity around the purpose. So, yeah, I think really, yeah, dig deep within yourself and even listen to that Millionaire Success Habits book because I think that's where they talk about going seven levels deep and it's really, really important to do that. It's amazing how much everything you do changes once you've done that. But, yeah, get after after you've done that, just get practical and just just do it. Just get to it. Take action. Stop thinking, oh, I'm going to do Take this. Take action. Just, just do it. Do it today. Like start making it. Even if you can't get the whole project done today, make a start. Um, and then you'll just keep chipping away and you'll get addicted to it and it will just keep happening. <laughs> you'll be b- bouncing out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yes, I love that. Yeah. I love that you gave us a full roadmap and everything. Hey, where can we find <laughs> you on social media and say hi? Yeah, um, so I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Instagram, I um, haven't been like on for very long. So, um, yeah, still in, in the workings with that. But it's just Rebecca Bianca Photography. No spaces for the Instagram and with spaces for the Facebook. And, yeah, I've got wedding photography workshops. i got the horse fun day, got face painting and obviously wedding photography. So, yeah, reach out, say hi. If you've got any questions, um, I'm happy to help. I'm always happy to help people. So, yeah. I'll put links to all those things underneath in the show notes. So you can just click on this episode and um, you'll see all that right there as well. Oh, cool. Thanks, Jai. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Thanks so much for um, getting me on the podcast. It was, yeah, it was really, really exciting for me. I've never been on a podcast before or done a Yay. YouTube video or anything like that or ever really been interviewed. So, yeah, thank you. I really, really appreciate um, you helping me um, with my business growth and personal growth. It's just, yeah, it's been an amazing journey and I just believe in everything you've got to say because it works. <laughs> it's <done> proof <laughs> in the pudding. Well, hey, I want to say thank you so much for um, taking the time to be on my podcast. And I'm glad that I got to be part of this milestone with you for your first podcast and um, and also your six figures and everything that you're doing. So keep going because obviously people are taking notice. Obviously, I've taken notice and people in the business map are taking notice. So keep burning bright and sharing with the world. And um, who knows what can happen? I'm excited for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jai.